Uh, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Jan, uh, as most of you probably know. And uh, yeah, I'm basically one of the developers of the Mission Pinball framework. And today uh, I will show a little bit about software. So uh, basically, we will talk about how to do light shows in, or like one way uh, how you can do light shows in MPF. And uh, especially how you can use your uh, your display, uh, your play field as a display. So how do you can how can you basically live render on your play field? And um, yeah, you can basically render almost everything. And uh, I will show you how. So let's start. And this is our agenda today. And so first, I will give you an overview about the like I guess three ways to do light shows and MPF. Afterwards, um, I will go into the architecture of MPF on how this specific way of like rendering um, a display on your playfield, how that works in MPF. And afterwards, I will give you like a small overview how the workflow works to, um, yeah, to do this, uh, basically to get this done, because there's a little bit of setup required. And then afterwards, I will give a small demo on how this works in my machine. And then um, I will tell you why it's awesome. <laughs> if you've got questions, feel free to ask anytime. And I can, I hope I can answer them. At least I will try. So what kind of shows do we have in NPF? So um, if you work with uh, the Mission Pinball framework before, uh, the first thing you can do is like you can do sh you can create shows by hand. So you can say, for example, turn all LEDs tagged with this certain tag uh, on or off or flash them. That's a very typical show or like some manual circles where you just circle lights. It's very typical stuff which you do manually. There's nothing wrong with that, but it gets tedious if you if, if you show contains like, I don't know, 100 LEDs or 200 or 500. Um, and at that point, you often use the, the show creator, which uh, Mark wrote. And that can be used basically to animate some sh shapes and move them over the play field. Uh, the workflow is similar to what I will show today, but not exactly the same. And uh, there's also like, um, like the advantage that everything is rendered at like, um, um, at design time, right? So at runtime, the show is just played. And then there's the third way, uh, which I will show today. That's you can map a display, that's basically an element in the media controller of MPF, to your play field and render like anything to it. So you can render like videos, you can, you can render some images, you can move shapes, everything in, in real time. So if you want to do anything dynamic, um that's something you can use and it will like use your gpu so it's relatively resource um friendly so because usually um you are not using your gpu that much that this is an issue um if you run like 4k animations in the 4k display then you might that might interfere you have to look at it but in general at least in my machine that's that's not an issue and I got like a lot of LEDs. I will show you in a minute. Um, so like those are basically your options in MPF, and you can combine those. So you can have some manually created shows, some show creator shows, and you can sometimes map displays uh, to your play field. Um, yeah. So and maybe there's even a fourth option to use like code. So you can use like um, custom code and contra control your lights uh, in custom code. So that would also be a way, right? Because um, sometimes that makes sense. Not, not very often, but sometimes. And then there are four options. But I guess those are the main three. So the architecture, basically how this works, how, to, how you can like map a display uh, to your play field, looks like this. Um, you might have seen this image um, in a very similar manner in the stream on dot matrix displays. And the reason is that it works almost exactly the same way. 
and with a few differences like on gamma correction. So, but in general, it works the same. So here you can see that here we got MPF and that's basically where your game runs. And um, your game then shows slides or triggers slides in the media controller. And slides can contain stuff like uh, images or videos or um, shapes or anything which the media controller can render. And this is then rendered not to a display, but to an FBO that's basically a buffer. So that's a, it's a not non-visible buffer in the, in the GPU. And afterwards, we grab the pixels of this FBO. So uh, we now wear in your, where in your, in your display or in the FBO, uh, your LEDs or your lights are located, and we grab those pixels out of, out of this, um, this image which the uh, GPU rendered. And as we just grab the specific pixels we are need, uh, which which we need for the, um, for your play field, it's also quite efficient. Uh, we then send those pixels back to MPF. And the reason for that is that your lights are typically controlled by MPF because it controls the hardware. And so that's why we send it over here. And then MPF updates the lights in your hardware. And that can then be any hardware, PROG, FAST, OPP, LISI, APC, whatever MPF supports, Spike, everything would work. So that's basically the general architecture how this works in MPF and um, yeah we will see in a minute how this works in practice because there's a little bit more involved because now I talk like um, lights are mapped to positions and so on and you might ask yourself how does that work right so um, how, how do you map those and that's basically our workflow to achieve that it's like a lot of text but it's um, really not that hard so the first thing you have to do is you have to map your lights in the MPF monitor. That's in general very useful. Just uh, open up the MPF monitor and draw, drag all like your lights and, and switches to your playfield or to a playfield image. That should be so the image should be quite exact to your real hardware because otherwise they would be offset. And then you so what the monitor will do it will save the positions of your lights into the monitor yaml file so that's basically a file to persist it and there's like a command in mpf to copy those over to your mpf config and then you got like the positions of your lights in your mpf config that's a command i will show you how this how this works and then, like at runtime of your machine, you have to start Light Display Player. That's how this component internally is named because it uh, uh, lights mapped as display and player is just to basically control stuff. That's how we call it in MPF, and that maps the display to lights. And um, how it will do that? It will look at the positions of the lights in your MPF config. And then it will check the size of the display in your media controller and basically map those depending on the position of your light and grab the pixel for you. Once you start that, everything else is automatically set up and it will just magically work. And so then your lights will basically show nothing yet. And next is you have to put something on your virtual display, right? So you have to put some images on there, some shapes, whatever, some video, and then there will be something shown. So by default, like your display will be transparent. So this will not turn your, your LEDs black. It will just um, show colors if there's a color on there. So you can put a black, like a black box on there or a rectangle on there, then they will be black and everything which is already on your lights will be off. But by default, they will be transparent and you will see what's below. And that's also sometimes useful if you just run like partial shapes or something and it can overlay your normal show. So, if, for example, if you look at um, what's called the, the first highway pin, um, they had like some, some search light which would search over the play field. And that would be, for example, something which you could implement with. Um, Light display player. And then, yeah, after, what, after that, the possibilities are endless. <laughs> so 
just enjoy what it gives you. And uh, that's already my slides. It's very short today because uh, I didn't want to talk so long. And now let's uh, look at the code. Well, not the code, but look at how it, how it actually works, right? So I will show you first um, my IDE. And um, we will look at my machine. So this is my machine. So I probably told most of you before. So I built like a head-to-head -head pinball machine. I got two play fields, which are basically like this. And the players are here and on this side, right? So they, they oppose each other and they fight each other. Here on this um, on the monitor, I put the play fields next to each other. So they in re reality, they are head-to-head. But here, for simplicity, I put them next to each other. And um, so they are identical, so same layout. And I positioned all the lights. So those are lights, and the rectangle parts or square parts, those are switches here. So those are all the lights. And um, yeah, I positioned this based on like the, the cut drawing I got here. Um, so that's like, you can imagine it's a lot of work, but it pays off, definitely do that. And um, so I can show you the rest of the monitor. So what you would do is like, you got all your lights here and I got like a lot of lights as you can see, and you just drag them over here. So that's that's how you do that. Same for switches. And um, that's already how that first step works. So yeah, invest the time, make it right, and makes them exact that really pays off so then if you look at the file for example that's the monitor yaml here and that's basically just a large list of positions and sizes the size does not matter here that's just for the monitor that's not for like light display player and um, so that's all like a position between zero and one so zero is i think zero is the bottom dot bottom and one is the top and same left from right to right so that basically maps it to the playfield image. And that's like a lot of lights in my machine here and switches and so on. Um, so we did that. That's the first step. Uh, second step is uh, we go in, into our machine folder um, as you would usually do when you start MPF. Uh, let me start, make this larger. And you type MPF scaffold. And scaffold is like a command which can create stuff for you. So we can here at like help, it can do like create, I think it can create modes and so, so you got an empty mode, which is just created. It's sometimes very useful if you want to create a lot of modes and you can also like script this. So that's, that's often helpful. And one feature it has is like copy uh, light positions. And now I have to tell it, into which file it cop should copy those because it does not know like in which file you put your lights in MPF. It's a little bit, it's a very simple tool. So let's let's see my machine. So I got like config files, con mm -hmm, LEDs. So LEDs is my file here, and um, we will put it into config LEDs dot yaml. It take a while, and yeah, I found. 345 lights. So I apparently mapped a lot of lights. And um, that's basically the second step. Now it copied or updated all the lights. So a lot of those have already been here, but you can see that some were updated, like this one. But yeah, only just a few, a very, a very few, right? And a very short data, right? So now we got like this, those light positions in our MPF config. And um, so normally those in MPF, they don't do anything, but like for this specific use cases, specific use case, they are used. Um, and now you can have like tags on your, tags here on your play field. Um, keep that in mind, it, we, will, we will come to that in a minute. So you can basically tag all your lights with a certain so like you can, for example, I got text per play field, for example, and so on. And also like, um, yeah, 
lights which I want to control together. For example, and I got common text for those. Um, because uh, the next thing is now, for example, in my attract mode, um, I want to use light segment player. And I will first show you how this looks in my machine. So this is my machine. Uh, it starts up and here you can see my machine. And now I'll show you the monitor again. It might lag a little bit now because there's a lot running. Uh, here you see my virtual display, the one I'm talking about, and that's mapped to the whole play field here. You can see that it is a little bit lagging now because, um, well, uh, it's uh, the, the PC is streaming and uh, it's uh, running MPF at the same time, so it's a little bit laggy now. Uh, you can see that now it's showing something that's that's running over the play field here, right? So I'm mapping this, but after that ends, now there's nothing here, and this is, for example, a manually created show with just the standard attract pattern, right? And now I think it will flash, and then it will show some stuff again here. And now, for example, I animate an, an image here, which is then rendered here on the play field. So, yeah, that's another image which runs over. Uh, it's now really a little bit lagging, but uh, like on a real machine, that, that works perfectly fine, um, but yeah, that's just uh, because the PC is less uh, less busy at that point. So let's say we want to do this. So and we want to do this. We will look at exactly this show, so just so that you get an idea how this works. Uh, so this is the display. This is like uh, the play field. Um. So first thing we need is we need like the display itself. So we need to define a display. And that looks like this. So we got our normal displays versus our window. That's my machine window, which I just showed you. Then I got my, my DMDs, also displays. And I got the play field. And that's basically my play field, the, the small one, which I showed you below. Start it again. So. Here you got like the, the four displays. So this one, that's the, the window display. That's the first DMD, second DMD, and that's the play field, the virtual play field, right? And that's that's how this is set up. So that's the way this basically works. And um, yeah, now we can look at um, the show. So, how does that work? So I got like an attract show, and now we got like um, here. Uh, so we show, stop some shows if they are already running, and this is basically to start light display players, like display lights, display light, display lights. Yeah, and um, you say you give it basically your target display. So that's the play field display, the one you, I just showed you. And then it should map all lights with, and now I can list the text it should it should map. And I saw just just um, asterisk because I want to map all the lights during a track. But you can also give it a tag here, and then it will just map certain lights. And and then at the same same time I show certain widgets here. So Nyan Nyan is basically the cat which you saw like running up and down, and uh, that's that's basically this image here. And that has certain duration, and afterwards um, it will show like another image. It runs for five seconds, and then like the multicolor image, and so on, right? And then at some point, I don't know it runs all the the bars. Uh, it's biking in German, <laughs> and uh, now let's go on, let's go on, let's go on. It runs more bars, and at some point. Um, it will. Oh no! I thought I would stop the the mapping, but I don't. I don't. But you could stop the mapping if you want. You can again stop the mapping like with the action stop, like on most of the players. But here, for example, now um, 
Now the server is this, sorry, that's also like that's that's a widget, which is this is that's basically a ball which is going over like a like a um, like an arrow. And then afterwards I show shows again here without stopping the player. So because as I told you earlier, it becomes transparent if there's nothing on it. Um, this just works so other shows can just run. So they, they run and as those lights are transparent from light display player, they would just show through it. And um, that's basically already how the whole magic works. Um, so like I got some sub shows here. So this show calls like other sub shows because I want to reuse the shows. Um, but that's basically my whole attract show. It's 100. 37 lines long, but not very long. And the show is um, the show is running for a few seconds. Let's see it again. No play field. There we go. Um, oh. Yeah, you see the cat, and that's basically translated to lights here. And now I see you see the multicolor image, which just uh, yeah, has nice colors. Now we, you see the bars uh, running down, and yeah, it's not really visible, but you can also see that those basically fade out at the end. So it's like a little bit fading, even because I enable default fade. So even that's it's possible. So in reality, that looks really, really nice. Um, I guess um, I could show you like a video, but I'm unfortunately not next to my machine here. So yeah, that looks that looks nice on, in reality, <laughs> even nicer. And yeah, that's that's basically already what I wanted to show. So really fast today, 21 minutes. It's probably my record <laughs> on covering the topic without talking too much. So, um, yeah, guys, um, thanks for, for joining. If you got any questions, now is uh, your time to, to shine and to ask questions. Um, uh, otherwise, I will just leave it running a little bit um, and you can, you can enjoy the track show. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, Anthony, how are you doing? Okay, so the live display mapping to light is really cool. Is there any way to save the result to? Of the render into a show file, so it's not calculated during runtime. Not at the moment. I mean, it's not hard technically. Um, depending on how accurate you you want to be, right? Um, so usually this runs at like 50 hertz, I think, by default. You can change it, but I think it runs at 50 hertz by default. And um, if we, for example, skip frames in MC, then then it will basically interpolate the the gaps, and you will not usually you won't see it right unless it's lagging as bad as it is here. But otherwise, you usually won't see it if it drops like a little bit. Um, and yeah, you could do so. We could do that. That that would be an option to add that. So one thing would be to like run it like um, we do in unit tests where we control time, right? Where we do like time warping and there we would be really exact. So we could like run it for like, I don't know, if we run at 30, 30 frames or 30 hertz, we could like run it, it for like three, 33 milliseconds, then get the frame, 33 milliseconds, get the frame and so on. Um, that, that would that would work probably, yeah. So we could like, Create like some render tool, like similar to IMC, right? The, the interactive media controller. And we could build something to re record your shows, or you could 
also like record all the LEDs, right? That would also be cool. So just start it, do whatever you want on your machine, and it will record uh, uh, record all the lights. I mean that that would be really easy, uh, especially. I mean, you could even render perfect fades, right? Because like this, the virtual platform knows exactly how large the fade is and so on. So, I mean, why not? That would be easy. We could do that. Um, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what what are you using for your uh, for your machine? Are you using a Raspberry Pi or something even less powerful? Mm. Because I, I'm not sure. Um, even like a Raspberry Pi can do that, or like the the upboard. Do you know this? Like the one which is in TNA, for example, for 100 bucks, that also runs uh, ran for example my machine there. That that works fine. Um, Raspberry Pi should also, I mean, unless you render videos as well, then then it gets then it probably gets tricky at some point. Um, yeah, like the upboard should should be totally up to it, in my opinion. Uh, the Raspberry Pi Four is also like a nice board. Um, if you want to use that, I got like some Yocto images for to build like an embedded image for. For the Raspberry Pi for Raspberry Pi Four, and uh, that really like improves the performance a little bit, and also gives you better startup performance. Um, I did this uh, part as part of another project, um, where we're using like um, some other stuff in Pinball, but uh, I in parallel I also built like some um, yeah some packages for MPF. I can package all the Python packages and so on. And cross compile them for the Raspberry Pi 4. So, yeah, let me know if you, if you need help there. <laughs> and that's also something, yeah, which we might do, right? We could think about like building an, a generic image for the Raspberry Pi 4. I don't want to get like in the, in the distribution business of like building images for like all kinds of boards, but we might be able to do like a few like for example the raspberry pi maybe maybe the upboard because it's x86 that's really simple so that just runs but yeah i'm not sure uh, again it will create support requests and um <laughs> there's like a, a very very steep learning curve to doing embedded linux versus uh just <laughs> Programming a pinball game, which is um, a little bit, not much, but a little bit easier, at least with MPF. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, that, uh, let me know. So, your Mass Effects, um, is, is it basically, is your game done now, or is it, are you still developing features for it, or just polishing? I mean, I know it's never done, but. Uh, I've, I've seen it. Great game. Unfortunately, I never, I never played it because we never met in Chicago. <laughs> it was unfortunate uh, in Chicago, sorry, in Seattle. But maybe next time, after the whole Corona mess is over, <laughs> then uh, I will come by, and then I want to play it. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I guess like that would be really nice. I guess like the next a next pinball expo, maybe not this year, but the one like even I don't know if this one will be happen like in in, re in in real life or in virtually but i guess like the next large pinball show after corona that that should be huge i guess because we will probably see like a lot of games because people were building games in 
during Corona because they had time, and now um, they are eager to to show. I would guess so. That would be probably like a show worth going for a custom pinball. So like they probably have like five to ten machines. At least I guess if Expo happens, that could be like that would be probably a great party for homebrew. <laughs> And uh, yeah, this year I probably won't be able to attend, but maybe next year. So yeah, let's see. You never know. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. So I guess that's a short stream. That's um, not bad. That's like I wanted to show it. Um, it's it will be like a. I hope a great like how to video for for especially for the documentation because we had a lot of questions on how to set this up. And I know it's a little bit tricky, um there are like a few things to do, but I hope with this video everybody will be able to do it. Um because it's it definitely works. I, I use it in my machine and at least a few more people also do. So that should be be possible for everyone. Um, and recording, I guess, like Anthony, if you want it, uh, sure, we can we can build like a recording tool um, into MPF or maybe even as a tool which goes against like um, the media controller, right? Um, or like the, the the like BCP protocol, so like MPF service, for example, that also like if you do MPF service. If you, Bring the machine into service mode, and that also connects via VCP. And this can also like run shows and stuff, right? It can also. I probably cannot list lights, so which show the color. I even does know the color, but I'm not sure if it knows the fades, for example. So it will just get the current color here. So it's like. <laughs> I got quite a few lights in my machine. So I guess my machine is a little bit as a stress, stress test for MPF and all the stuff because I got everything probably twice as often as other machines. So, but it works. So, and even service mode works and attract restarts and so on. Um, yeah, I guess like on Saturday I will do like another stream on, um, Encoding like a segment displays because we had like one last weekend uh, where we fixed some bugs and actually I thought we fixed all of them but there's at least two more and um, I want to fix those before the next release. That's one of the things I um, I want to get done. And then I guess we can also do like a release in the next few weeks. Uh, because like I guess it's due. Other um, additionally, like um, I will uh, I will become a father, so I won't have time by end of the year. So <laughs> it's better to just get a release out, and then we got a release, and uh, then it's not like lingering around, and it's done, and. Uh, then we can focus on the next release uh, probably next year. So that's basically my goal here for, for the release management stuff, which we sometimes have to do. If you call yourself maintainer, you also have to maintain and make releases. Um, yeah, so that's uh, basically it for today then. So very short stream. Uh, then uh, I guess have a great remaining week. Uh, I hope uh, you got great weather like I got this week. And uh, yeah, Anthony, thanks for joining. Uh, thanks for the kind words and the nice, nice questions. Uh, have a great afternoon uh, in the US. And yeah, we will very certainly <laughs> see each other soon, at least virtually in one of the chat. Um, so yeah, have a, have a great day. Keep on hacking. See you soon. <laughs>